video that I posted yesterday is already at 1.1 million likes and 600,000 shares. The comment section is literally even crazier. Everyone's confused, so let me show you what exactly is going on. My new song, Bring Me Water, is coming out on June 28th in a couple of weeks, and I have this really last minute idea that I am praying we can actually pull off to do a little teaser video, of course, referencing the original meme, Bring Me a Little Water Selfie. Bring me a little water now. The crew is outside while I'm getting dressed. This is gonna be the full fit for tonight and I'm really, really, really excited because I just know that this is going to shake the internet up. It's going to be a little bit cringe, but it's definitely going to go viral and that is exactly what we're looking for to promote the new song, which, spoiler alert, is not bringing the water, Sylvie. Let's go get in the pool and bring Sylvie some water. <laughs> Okay, you guys, we're all set. Look at our beautiful, gorgeous set for the evening. This is what the camera angle is currently giving. We have the camera set up. Time for me to get into the water. Let's go. My water bill is gonna be real high this month. I've been heating the pool for the last two days, getting ready. Oh, yes, that's like a hot tub. Oh, it's so warm. It's so warm. Oh, yeah. Do not get in. <laughs> Bring me a little water, Sylvie. It's a lot harder to tread water with clothes on. This is heavy. It's gonna be a good workout. Or I'll actually be drowning, which will be good for the video. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I have good life insurance. <laughs> Thank you, Cassie, anyway. Bring <laughs> <laughs> me little water, Sylvie. Every little once in a while. What was that giving? Okay, how was that one? That was great. I really like the performance and the action. I think we're done. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> so, Ukai is using a something very historical as a way to trend. He knows this is going to trend. It's going to blow up his views and that is the look that he's looking for that's the, that's what he's wants he's going for uh, it's very interesting watching people like him use things that are very significant to black people to bring attention to them and i hope you got what you're looking for because that was the aim that you were looking for isn't it james you, you knew the intention. James. That was the teaser video for James Charles' upcoming single, Bring Me Water, and I know that this is not going to be a cover of Bring Me a Little Water, Sylvie, and he's just doing, you know, this promo because... If you didn't know, he went viral because at one of his meet and greets years and years and years ago, he sat in the middle of a circle and sung Bring Me a Little Water, Sylvie with a group of people standing around him. And it's something that people have clowned him for in the past. It's like one of his most memeable moments, I would say. And he's using it to, you know, get some eyes on his upcoming single. And so people pre-save it to be like, what is this? Because when he posted it, he also included a pre-save link where you can kind of add it to your playlist on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever. James knows the internet very well, and he knows what will get people to, you know, pre-save this song, and that is to get them curious as to if it really is a cover of Bring Me a Little Water, Sylvie. So, of course, he's using that meme in his promo, even though the, the song is probably going to sound nothing like it. But when I tell you guys yesterday I saw this on my For You page, and I just burst out laughing, like, I had to talk about it because... This video is utterly ridiculous. Like, he's swimming in an ocean that's on fire, singing Bring Me a Little Water. Like, I, I have to laugh. Like, so I don't know what this song is going to sound like. Please let me know in the comments if you have any guesses or if you have any insight onto what this is going to be. But I think this would be his third single since he started his music career. He released his first one, I think, in, like, March, and then he's just been going slowly ever since then. So I don't know if he's planning to release an album or what, but I guess this is his third song, Bring Me Bring me a little water now. Bring me a little water, Sylvie. Bring me a little water now. I just added it in there just in case you wanted to see the video, what it looked like. I guess he looks different. He gained weight and uh, 
does his makeup completely different now. So um, I guess, yeah, it's really weird, cringy for him to even use that song. But even though when people explain it, it doesn't even take away the cringe that the song is nothing complete, it's going to be completely different. He's just using it for hype and he's know that people are going to come for him in the comments. And address the fact that he's using something that's very significant to very to black people. But again, black people, black people, black people, I'm not going to address you today. I have a theory. I have no idea if it's true, but... When I first saw that video of James Charles singing Bring Me Little Water Sylvie many years ago, I immediately thought he learned that from a teacher in a middle school choir, a children's choir, youth choir, even high school, I don't know. And again, I have no way to know if that's true. But assuming that it is, I think it is an important example of how crucial it is to introduce young singers to music in a culturally competent way. And maybe that was done and he just forgot or didn't sing in or something. But clearly, again, assuming that my theory is right, learning that song was a formative experience for him. And he remembered it and he remembered how he felt singing it. But he did not remember or know the context behind it, who it was written by, and who it was written for. And I'm sorry, I can't tag videos and descriptions anymore, but I'm going to tag a creator who did a great video about the history of this. Okay, good morning. So James Charles has sent me down a little rabbit hole about um, black history based on his video that he's posted a day ago. So in the video, James Charles is in water and there's flames behind him and he's singing, bring me water, Sylvie. He posted another video uh, recently to clarify and he was saying that he has a song coming out on June 28th and he's singing Bring Me Water Sylvie to reference, he says he is singing it to reference a meme of him that developed years ago when he was singing the similar song. Now in both instances of the video, James Charles appears to be thinking that he's referencing himself when he sings Bring Me Water Sylvie, but there's actually a really deep history um, tied to that song that has its roots in, black, in the Black South and also on enslavement plantations. And this is due to none other than legendary folk singer and musician, Hadi Ledbetter. His name in, unform, informally was referred to as Lead Belly. Now, Lead Belly had quite, quite a tumultuous life, I would say, but this video by James Charles definitely made me want to talk a little bit about this piece of history and where Bring Me Water Sylvie comes from and also how we got here today. So Lead Belly was born uh, on the Jeddah Plantation, and this is kind of what it looked like uh, back then. And this is the Jeddah Plantation today. So um, Lead Belly was known as someone who was being, who was going to be a very talented musician from the age as young as five years old. His uncle, uh, Terrell, was the one who actually got him his first accordion, which is pretty cool. And so that was the first instrument that he ever got to really experiment with. And, you know, he went on and built his career from there. So Lead Belly had a couple of scandals um, as he grew up. Uh, from the age of 15, he had a child and then he had another child at the age of 16, um, neither of which he really spent much time in the lives of, per se. Um, and so by that point, too, he was then getting involved in the law and having um, a lot of issues with criminality uh, as well. I would take all of this with a grain of salt. At the time um, that Lead Belly was growing up, there were a lot of criminal cases being levied against Black men, and there were a lot of situations that Black men would find themselves in as a result of their race. There's actually like an NPS uh, article where they said that Lead Belly was a very strong child and that he would pick a lot of cotton and that it was, he was just seen as someone who was very strong from a young age. But in truth, he was very strong because he was made to be right. He was made to go out and 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 induce hard labor from a very young age. And that is what made his physicality that much greater than those um non th those that were around him if that makes any sense so really that physicality was thrust upon him and that criminality 
I would say is a result of the trauma of what he had to endure. So anyways, um, Lead Belly then ends up going to prison. Um, the first reason he went to prison was because of an assault on a woman. And so he, that was like the first time he goes to prison. In fact, his parents had to kind of take a loan on the farm because uh, he was born to two parents who worked on a farm. And so his parents took a loan on the farm that they worked on at the time um, to pay his legal fees. So once that happens, he also then comes out and he falls in love and he marries his first wife at the time. And the both of them just work together um, as laborers, essentially. But then, you know, things just start to kind of get out of control. The wife does leave him probably as a result of him being in prison. And so then he goes out into the world and he starts to tour um, his music because uh, at that time he had known that that was what he wanted to do. So he leaves to kind of wander through life, find himself, tour the music, and he also continues to work. One of the places he actually ends up touring is in Shreveport, uh, Louisiana. And, and because of the frequency of him touring in that one area and performing in that area, they actually there's an area called Lead Better Heights, which is named after him. And if you're in Louisiana, there's a statue um, as well in his honor today. So Lead Better continues to tour around and he tours bars. Um, he tours like their red light district areas as well in the South. Um, and he continues to get involved in uh, the legal system. In one such case, unfortunately, he does end up in a fight. There are multiple instances where he ends up in fights. The reports claim that he never started it. In one such instance, he was dancing to music at a local bar and a white individual was mad at him for doing that and they got into a fight. In another instance, somebody had stole his liquor and they got into a fight. But one of the biggest cases that was levied against him, he ended up having to go to prison for 30 years for murder. And this is pretty interesting. So while he's in prison for a murder serving, serving 30 years, um, there's a governor at the time uh, who visits frequently at this prison because Lead Belly would sing so often. And so this is Governor Morris Neff. And so this is a governor who was actually known and on record saying that he would never pardon anyone. He would not pardon anyone's criminal activities, nothing like that. But the one person he did pardon was Lead Belly because he loved Lead Belly's song. And so Lead Belly sang one time to this governor, um, please pardon me. And so that was what got him released after seven years of a 30 year sentence. So Lead Belly would continue to kind of tour and he would also continue to get involved in drama in the legal system. And he ended up in another penitentiary in Angola. In Angola. And so while he was there, he ran into John and Alan Lomax. So this right here is John Lomax. And this individual here, um, one over from the left is Alan Lomax. And so they were father and son. So John and Alan, Alan Lomax's jobs, they were touring um, South, like the local South, and they were recording musicians in the area at that time for the Library of Congress. They wanted to preserve the music that was coming out of the local South. And they came across Lead Belly and they absolutely loved him. They loved him so much that they actually went away, got better equipment, came back to record Lead Belly's music. And one of the songs that they were that Lead Belly would sing was called Good Night Irene. And Good Night Irene was made, written, arranged by Lead Belly, but you might also know it um, by The Weavers or by Eric Clapton. Um, and that was not the only famous song that Lead Belly had written and performed as well. And so they loved this song so much that they also wrote to another governor uh, about how talented Lead Belly was and that got Lead Belly out of prison. Now on the record, the governor did say that it had nothing to do with the music. It was about cost, uh, cutting costs, but Lead Belly and the Lomaxes are on record saying that the governor did love the song so much and they do believe the song is the reason he got sent out of prison. Out of prison. Now the Lomaxes didn't give Lead Belly a fair share at the end of their relationship. Um, they ended up kind of, so by the time Lead Belly got out of prison out of the penitentiary, um, it was the Great Depression era. And so there wasn't much work. And also for Lead Belly's parole, he needed to have a stable, like a regular job. And so there wasn't much work. So 
After some back and forth, essentially, the Lomaxes sent Lead Belly back to Louisiana. They told him to go back, but in that process, they didn't give him any of the money that he earned as well during the touring process with them. So it's kind of a, a fishy ending there. But that didn't stop Mr. Lead Belly. He went on to continue singing. He went to New York. Um, he got a lot of great media profiles in like Time Magazine and Life. Here's actually one of the Life Magazine uh, features. The headline is just atrocious, <laughs> as you can read it up. Read that headline right there below Lead Belly. Not great, not great. <laughs> but he did get a lot of great profiles. And so he was able to tour. He was able to play his music still, which was really great. And there was a movie made about him. However, um, in this New York Times article from 1976, you kind of get the idea that the director, Gordon Parks, who made the movie about Lead Belly, allowed a lot of racist prejudices influence how he directed the film and a lot of items and claims in the film aren't necessarily true for instance this is how they depicted him in the poster and this is who he was in real life lead belly certainly had a pretty tumultuous life a pretty harsh life um one unfortunately that really was due to his race um, and the state of the world at that time but Bring Me Water, Sylvie was definitely a song that was influenced by the workings on that plantation. And so I just wanted to kind of talk about that. And, and I hope James Charles and others who might sing this song keep that in mind and keep that impact in mind when they sing it as well. Mm -hmm. 